Hello lovelies. As some of you know, I was helping one of the candidates in the US Transhumanist Party campaign. And that's thankfully, <laughs> or perhaps thankfully, come to an end now. Now unfortunately the candidate I was backing, Rachel Haywire, didn't win. Uh, and double unfortunately, the candidate that did win was extremely dull, boring, milk toast isn't going to grab a great deal of attention or anything and well there, there's there's shenanigans around the whole thing but on the bright side um rachel also runs the trigger warning site that i've been writing for um and makes music which i've done a couple of videos uh, for her for so hopefully now that this is all over she can concentrate on more fun things that i can help her with instead but uh, yeah, I can actually talk about the campaign now and it won't seem particularly unseemly, though it might seem like sour grapes. I trust my audience to be fairly savvy on these things, but for people who aren't up on this sort of thing, what is transhumanism? Well, I think we all know what humanism is, right? It's the idea that since there's no God, we should probably all look out for each other and try to make the world a better place for all of us. Um, humanism, yeah, overall, I think it's been a positive, secular force. Um, though it's kind of lost, lost its teeth. Um, which is a sign of how religion has kind of lost its teeth as well at the same time. You don't have so much to oppose, necessarily, uh, Islam notwithstanding, and uh, the increasing desperation of Christianity in the West notwithstanding, but, but, but still, yeah, that, that's kind of there. Transhumanism takes that further, I suppose, in that we should also seek to change ourselves in ways that are positive, in ways that we would change technology and so on. At the, at the good end, transhumanism is about democratizing and empowering technology and new ways of thinking, new ways of looking at things, new technologies, new ways of ordering society, altering our genome, interfacing with computers, uh, you're looking to technological human solutions to problems both inside ourselves and outside ourselves. Mostly we tend to think of technology as only repairing damage to ourselves, whereas transhumanism looks into things to improve ourselves. Nootropics, cybernetics, genetic engineering, that, that sort of thing. You can see it as the kind of vanguard of philosophical, social and technological expansion. That's at, that's at the good end, right? It's, it's a strong belief in our ability to solve problems, including problems that are internal to us. At the bad end, there's this religious belief in the singularity, a sort of takeoff point where technological innovation becomes so rapid and self-sustaining that essentially it becomes magic in, in a lot of ways. Uh, that. AI, super intelligent AI, will come about and then that will be transformative for, for society. And they tend to err on the positive side rather than the Terminator side. M yeah, more iRobot, less hunting killer drones hunting you down in the street and murderating you. Um, it's also at that bad end a kind of longevity cult. And this is where a lot of the sort of Silicon Valley people, the libertarian technologists and so on come in and they kind of bend the needle of transhumanism towards this immortality cult. Um, I'm not necessarily certain that what, you know, I would like more life, but I'm not necessarily certain that I would like to be immortal. And I know that sounds weird coming from a suicidal depressive, but, but there you go. So at the good end, it's about humans taking care of humans improving humanity through technology and not just in terms of our situation but actually improving and changing and transforming humanity through technology transhumanism is that intermediate stage of transformation 
before we potentially get to a post-human world where either we have transitioned into being something that can no longer be described as human or we have created a successor form of life, perhaps AI or robotics being post-human. That's a very brief sort of primer. I could go on for a lot longer. The point of a fringe candidate is not to win, right? You've got virtually no hope of ever winning. It's about publicity, it's about promoting your ideas, it's about picking up new members, things like that, right? So even if it wasn't Rachel who'd made me aware of all this or who had essentially hired me to produce these, these videos and so on for her and for her campaign, she's who I would have backed, you know? She's, she's a writer, she's a musician, she's a performance artist, she has actual you know charisma <laughs> and and an image and all of this if you want to draw attention to your cause rachel was the person to do this but she didn't win you know fair enough but there are shenanigans which are worth bringing up there was an awful lot of spam in the sort of latter third to quarter of the campaign in support of the person who did win and a lot of this appeared to be coming from throwaway, mostly South Asian accounts. It wasn't Russians, it was South Asian accounts, Bangladesh, and so on. Which suggests either, either a bot farm or people being hired to do this kind of spamming. I guess that kind of fits the technological motif, but it's not exactly on, is it? <laughs> to engage in that kind of behaviour. There were also a bunch of slanderous lies and so on put out about Rachel. She's been a target, to some extent, of the little sort of San Francisco technological H plus bubble for a while, and she's planning to whistleblow in some of them. So I guess it's not that surprising that she was targeted. The whole Epstein thing was going on. Um, during the campaign as well, or at least the the latest and the last bit of that. Now, Epstein does relate to all of this because he was heavily involved in and financing H+, Humanity+. Plus. Um, that was another set of shenanigans that went on because the people in charge of that decided to tell people they couldn't use the H+, logo, which is a fairly common transhumanist logo and, and element and they don't like Rachel very much either and they have a lot of financial clout even with Epstein having gone. Um, you would have thought that association with Jeffrey Epstein would have damaged that side of things. Instead it seems to have motivated them and activated them to directly and indirectly interfere with the election against Rachel as much as for anybody else. Perhaps fearful that she would further tarnish their reputation by talking about other things that had gone on. So there was interference from certain people, there was bot activity, there were lies and so on. Now you can, when it comes to political campaigns and so on, you can delete the lie, you can refute the lie, you can say the party does not endorse these lies or whatever, but the damage is already done. Going back closer to the start of the whole campaign, it launched with a handful of candidates. Not, not that many, really. And things were going along, and Rachel was well ahead in the lead in all the polling and everything. And then they changed the rules to allow later entries. So a bunch of other people joined the campaign, and this further split the vote. And one person who was being heavily promoted at the time. I'm avoiding names because it's petty drama for the most part. One person had a very big profile, a lot of boosts, a lot of support through the campaign and then dropped out. More, more shenanigans. <laughs> um, basically, at the end of all this, it would be my conclusion that the US Transhumanist Party, at least, I'm not sure about the other wings of the party, but that the US Transhumanist Party is not fit for purpose. They are too intimately tied in with H+, uh, Epstein's legacy, with the immortality cult. 
that was the main thrust of a lot of what was discussed during this and on the transhumanist groups run by the US Transhumanist Party it seems like every other post is about longevity um, and not necessarily with the degree of skepticism that you would want from a technologically scientifically minded group it seems to be the primary concern for a lot of people and there's so much more that transhumanism could be about democratization of technology um, making life better rather than longer making production cheaper uh, decentralizing power water food production things like this there's a lot of things it could be doing to improve people's quality of life rather than seemingly advocating for immortality for the very wealthy now that's where the funding is but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea and uh, it does tend to lead it into quasi-religious cult behavior i think there's a there's a need for something different transhumanism for the masses populist transhumanism if you will technology for all improvement for all a science party a, a skeptic party something like that that's what i think is needed a, a ruthlessly pragmatic technocratic party about expertise about science about realistic goals one after another and placing technology in the hands of the masses and that would be far more in line with my own anarcho-technocracy beliefs but the UN and transhumanist party it's it's not it and I don't trust their commitment to democracy or to the general mass of humanity after all this very vicious and no sir I don't like it Zhang. I, I, I don't like the, I, I have, okay, like a lot of you, I hate a lot, you know, <laughs> but I hate with style and creativity. <laughs>